Thinking Resilience, Transforming Lives. We live in a time of tremendous climatic and economic upheaval. The sustainability challenges of yesterday have become today's resilience crisis. The question that confronts us is, what can we do to adapt to these new changes? The climate in Zambia is variable, experiencing frequent droughts, seasonal and flash floods, extreme temperatures and dry spells. The variations are becoming more frequent and more intense. We must now confront these and other increasingly complex problems by building resilience at all levels, including the community. Thinking resilience means changing our lives, changing our community livelihood and well-being. To be resilient to climate change is to be able to withstand the shocks which come with it and still continue with life in a sustainable way. In facing the negative impacts of the weather due to climate change, citizens know well what this has meant to their daily lives. The drastic dependence on agriculture and other natural resource-based livelihood strategies of rural population makes the poorest people the most vulnerable to climate variability and long-term climate change. As espoused in its seventh national development plan, the main aim of government of the Republic of Zambia is to reduce poverty and inequalities in a sustainable development way through socio-economic growth and development. I must say that this project is a, a very successful project because um, it has actually impacted positively uh, the people in, the, in those particular areas in the Kafka Basin. Very, very possible in, indeed that um, people now are able to use uh, the infrastructure of the government has provided. Uh, they are able to take the animals for drinking, they are able to do gardening, and also um, sell those uh, produce to the market and they improve their life. So I must say this is a poverty reduction program, and for us it has actually worked very well. As a government, we want to see to it that uh, this project is replicated to not only more but other uh, districts uh, in, in Zambia. The Ministry of National Development Planning, through the strengthening climate resilience in the Kafue Sub Basin project, has supported climate adaptation initiatives in over 1,700 micro projects, reaching about 272,850 beneficiaries. The projects that have been happening in Lazuka are solar powered boreholes. So, most of the communities that's in Meganega, Mugoto, and some parts of Magoye were funded by Skrika and we've had some places which have been um, funded with the uh, construction of water drinking truck and then the project where we are currently was funded with um, submissible solar power tanks 
last uh, we've implemented about 103 projects in Itejiteji funded by Speaker. Uh, among those projects, we have the goat, we have goat wearing projects, pig wearing projects, and gardening projects, and also solar powered balls, which we have put in most of the communities in Itejiteji. In Mumbo, our district, we have about uh, in total 139 projects, 80 being a uh, soft adaptation and uh, 59 being hard adaptation. So we've got uh, gardens in Mumba Ward, and then we've got piggeries and goat houses, uh, chickens and uh, sheep in Sichanzo. And then we've got uh, mostly goat houses in Nalubanda Ward. The livelihood diversification and increased productivity for vulnerable rural communities through crop reduction, aquaculture, livestock management, and agro-based processing. Before the introduction of the Skrika project, communities mainly produce only one crop during rainy season, maize, which is Zambia's staple food. Rainfall deficits due to climate change and climate vulnerability significantly reduced agricultural productivity. The Skrika project has supported communities with climate resilient infrastructure, such as solar powered boreholes to support increased agricultural production even in the midst of climate risks and hazards. This has enhanced food security and income levels, which has in turn reduced poverty and vulnerability in the communities. This is our project now to Africa Sala. And part of my group, I keep telling the Amish, it's a very mama guidance. Women need to arrange to Africa Sala and look at them pockets. See, she won't say, I'm so pushed. No more what to take project. I mean, she not quite in Bushi, in a few one to name one business. She didn't know. Name Sal to Redima. So at least in a twice while name Salo to the Stisha. Wash them all over the fire. What are one of school? In all the districts around which the Squeaker project was implemented, beneficiaries of this support have seen positive changes to their lives. One key component of Squeaker project was the provision of matching grants to a selected number of business entities. We have the matching grant under steel component one to bring on board the private sector uh, to come and offtake what the primary producers are producing and buy off or add value to them. And then um, that way um, it's providing a market, access to market for the producers so that they are not just producing for consumption but also raise an income as they adapt to climate change. Among them was Silver Food Solutions, Get My Health, Magoya Chickens, House of Ruth. Between somewhere that towards the end of the year, uh, we came across uh, Skrika. It's a, a program under National Development Planning uh, Ministry. Uh, who had, you know, the, the program which suited what we normally do. And uh, the ministry was very much interested to have us train the, you know, the, the rural farmers in their catchment areas. This is Mumbwa. The project which we are doing now, we have started you know, giving seeds to the women so that they can plant those seeds. They have planted, in fact, they have planted the seeds and then we have trained them how to, to, to uh, first of all, to plant. After planting, you know, the, 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 in three months they have to harvest and then after harvesting now, they have to work on the um, uh, Moringa itself now, the powder. One of the things which are good for Moringa is it's, it's on malnutrition. It has helped a lot of people who are malnourished. And then he, on the people who have got like, who are HIV positive, on boosting up the immune system is very good. Skrika also had a deliberate focus during its implementation. It was on women's empowerment. Women in rural areas are among the vulnerable groups negatively affected by climate change in Zambia. A large percentage of women in rural areas are subsistence farmers who depend on rain-fed agriculture. In times of droughts or floods, food security in homesteads is compromised. Women being caregivers are affected the most in times of extreme weather 
and in times of water scarcity, they are affected much more than the male counterfolk because they walk long distances to fetch water for their homesteads. Meeting essential community needs, building community resilience ultimately has to come to grips with the infrastructure that enables any community to function. This lesson looks at food, water, energy, and money systems, and how these can be made more resilient. If any one of these essentials goes haywire, a community loses its support capacity very quickly. The Skrika project also focuses on building resilience at the district and at national level. One infrastructure project supported through Skrika is a 247-kilometer road network connecting Kalomo through Dudumwesi to Ngoma, Iteji Teji, up to the Namwala pontoon. In the past, it used to take us about five to six hours driving to deliver our patrol logistics, like food rations for patrols, pills, and other things. But this time, after we the road was constructed. It just one takes us about one and a half hours. So it's cost is saving and the, they are saved a lot on, in terms of time. And also, we used to spend a lot on repairing our vehicles. This was a road then. It was completely impossible. It affected access to market, opportunities for growing the tourism industry, especially between Livingstone and the Kafua National Park Zone. Today, we are driving on a different road. It is modeled as a climate resilient road. It is all weather and provides a useful link to the many areas around which it passes. The climate resilient road specifically improves access to markets, it has made access and supply to essential government services much more possible than it was in the past. Tourism development is now on the upswing. Stakeholders are elated. The testimonies are real and provide useful insights into what has changed and what will likely be the benefits moving forward. It is an enabler of livelihood diversification, which the Skrika project aims to achieve. This road is important as it's brought a lot of socio-economic development to Itezitezi, Dundumwezi, and Kalomo. Because you find that during the rainy season, most places were cut off. So you find that the connection between Itezitezi, Namwala, and Kalomo was not there. But as from the time the road came, the connection is there. So it's brought enough socio-economic development. This road, it has helped us a lot. Because a long time ago, when we called the ambulance, it used to take one hour from our district hospital, it is stage. But nowadays, it's only 20 minutes it has come to attend to the patient. So it has really helped us. Before this road, we have, we have difficulties even to... Uh, the motorists were not encouraged to, to come here. To the pontoon and the testage because the road was so bad that uh, even they, they couldn't risk to to bring these uh, small vehicles to Matakitis here, bearing people. But this time we have a number of them. Maybe at the end of the day, we are we are likely to have even about to eight, eight or so every day from the to the pontoon. The thing is, almost center school here, we are also an examination center for the nine experience. So it's very easy for parents and the learners coming from the outskirts coming to this center to acquire places so that their learners can also be admitted for the nine experience exam. And if, even during the time of the nine internal and the seven internal exams, the people from the district they are able to get their the papers, the answer scripts from this center. So it's easy for these other schools around to bring their papers to this school. And then the, the district gets the papers from here taken to the office. 
the construction of Karoma Dundumezi Road, uh, it has made it possible or easy to transport the teaching and learning materials to the schools. At the same time, even the transportation of examination materials, and it has improved the quality of teaching because uh, the teachers, the head teachers and learners are always aware that the provincial education officer, district education board secretary, and together with the education standard officers, they can visit them at any time. So issues of compromising, it is no longer there. I think there has been a change, a great change. After the road was constructed, so the numbers of park visitors that we received so far increased. Uh, like in 2018, in total we received about 2,362 uh, park visitors, of which 1,138 were international visitors and uh, 928 were local tourists. So when it came to 2019, we received about 1,274 international tourists and uh, 1,245 uh, local tourists. Um, of course, the road um, itself, we are learning lessons from it, um, but it has provided linkage um, and access to market. Um, because now the traders, especially of livestock, are able to access Kasumbalesa market um, via, without transiting through Lusaka. Um, but they use that route from Kalomo and access central province without passing through Lusaka. So it cuts down travel time and, and um, as well as um, they are now providing this market for the rural farmers in, in, in that part of the region, southern province. Institutionally, through Skrika, government departments and agencies have greatly benefited from project support. For many local authorities and district administrations in the pilot districts, this has assisted them in effectively reaching out to communities and work with them in closely delivering around their development needs. The approach to this project has been local. Funded by the Climate Investment Funds with the support of the African Development Bank, the Strengthening Climate Resilience in the Kafue Basin Skrika project is one of the flagships of pilot program for climate resilience in Zambia. It has called successes. It has been a basis for modeling other climate resilient projects further upscaled and implemented by the Zambian government in its further efforts to achieve climate resilience nationwide. The Skrika project is aimed to strengthen the adaptive capacity of poor rural communities and natural resource-based production systems that are vulnerable to the impacts of climate change in the Kafua sub-basin. As a culmination of many successes, the Skrika project scored. The Ministry of National Development Planning, Strengthening Climate Resilience Project in the Kafue Sub-Basin has won the African Water Changemakers Award at the just-ended 2021 Climate Adaptation Summit. Ministry of National Development Planning Permanent Secretary Chola Chabala disclosed the development during a media briefing in Lusaka today. Mr. Chabala said the award is People's Choice Prize, which seeks to celebrate and make visible the teams and organizations that shape water decisions that build climate resilience in Africa. The announcement of the international community and the people on the ground of Zambia's, on, the, on the commitment by the Zambian government uh, with regard to the implementing of, implementation of people-centered projects that go towards empowering the masses, especially those vulnerable uh, uh, segments uh, within the communities within which we are implementing the project to be able to cope with the challenges of the day. Since its inception in 2014, SCRICA has been a common acronym to those who have benefited directly and indirectly from the project. We are so glad with the coming of SCRICA. Most of these hand pump bowls have been upgraded to solar-powered bowls. 
the financial investment has increased opportunities and strengthened beneficiaries' resilience from the effects of climate. The lives of many people in this area have transformed. Community A, project Wagari unga kuinka wote kama enda kuvuka zero four kuyobo randi za sixteen seventeen hawa wote kwa mgonze usiga kure tama enda kwa kuti jipandura kuto usawa usi ni jaguri ya wagani na kambo jaguri ya jichiwa enda so usawa usiga sixteen hawa siku kutarika kupanga tu wagari wote kwa bana bache ni varie wagari kuingi ni damaro asibi amantrishi ni kambo guri ya gai kwa ronga tangu kambo kupere wa enda inoni yaga siga projecte ya skrika kwa baba ntu amibiri tu ayagua Kwari mwa uti tula pona. Kambo kakuti jonse jindi tula nyo atuwa enda menda. Tula liya atuwa enda kulia. Bama ga intu. Bariri yivi degu wa sha. Sisa nizotu sama. Nizoba sama bama ga intu. Inga ziri kilini. Kwa kuti nseba zi yesu. Yagu wa biriru atuwa baga votu. Skrika remains a household name to them. And its impact should go beyond the project lifespan. I must also say that... Um, um, Skrika project is part of the Zambia pilot program for uh, climate resilience. So piloting um, such programs was not just done in Zambia. Um, I mentioned at the beginning that this was funded by the Climate Investment Fund. So the Climate Investment Fund also as well as the African Development Bank uh, draw lessons from this initiative and see how this can be replicated in other African countries. They also remain grateful to government for the Skrika project. With the help that we were given, it has gone a long way.